Hey, yo, you're listening to Edge Coach Quip, featuring our very own edge coaches and community, dropping knowledge nuggets to fuel your day. Hello, and welcome to episode 114 of Coach Quip. Today, we're talking about 10 tips for running in the dark. Because let's face it, it's dark. <laughs> it's dark in the morning, it's dark in the evening. We still have a solid month and a half before we even get to solstice so this is a reality yeah just this morning i got a message from one of my athletes that said it is dark it is cold i do not want to run and i'm sending you this message to hold myself accountable so this is perfect timing like what can we do to make sure that we're staying on our training when it is dark and cold all right first up first tip of 10 is going to be your quip it's safety in numbers run with a partner run with a group we know that there are safety in numbers and that we will ultimately be, you know, if there is an issue, like less of a target, if something happens, we have more people, more brains, more bandwidth. Um, It also is a wonderful accountability. So similar to Mm -hmm. how your athlete messaged you, if you are being counted on to show up at the east end of the 606 at 535 a.m., um, then you're going to show up. And that's a really great way to make sure that that your workout gets done um, and it gets done safely. Yeah, and I think just having a even one person, but doing group runs is a great way to hold yourself accountable, but also just to have that additional safety factor. Uh, it's more people who are more visible, more people who are looking around and seeing things, more people who can communicate if something is up ahead or to make sure that you can safely cross the street, all the things that we should be thinking about and that we'll be talking about in the bonus miles in our additional tips. Also, I would love to put a shameless plug for our current, well, now new cycle that just started this week of Edge Run Club, which is Road to Trail. And definitely our weekday runs are Mondays at uh, 6.45 p.m. Very dark. Very dark. (laughs) No matter what, we're going to be dark until summer at that time. Um, And then Thursday mornings from 6 to 7 a.m., which are dark initially, but will hopefully start to lighten up um, once we flip that time change, which we already have. So... Feel free to learn more about that at edgeathlete.me slash run or DM us and we can tell you a little bit more about it, but that's a great way. People know you're coming. You have to register. (laughs) You show up. The coach knows you're supposed to be there and it's a great way to safely get those miles in. All right. So coming up in our bonus miles, we have nine additional tips for you about running in the dark so that we can make sure your training stays consistent through the season of very little daylight. Stick around. Back from our bonus miles, we are talking about running in the dark, and we know that the time change, even though it just happened, we're going to be tackling a lot of these early morning and late night miles in the dark. So nine additional tips to get you through, starting off with being visible. This is our second tip, be visible. I cannot stress this one enough. Wear your reflective gear, wear bright colors, so we're thinking like our orange, yellow, and like the high visibility, think construction site, right? You might feel ridiculous, might feel like a highlighter, but that is absolutely what's necessary to keep you safe. I know just last night I was driving and it was starting to snow. It was the first snow of the season here and it was limited visibility because of the snow, but also it was getting dark. And it was nearly impossible to see people crossing the street in their all black jackets, in their dark colors, Uh, no reflective items at all. Even when they had the light, it was, and I had headlights on, it was difficult to see them. So just, you have to imagine that people cannot see you and you have to navigate the world like that when you are out running in the dark. So try to be as visible as you can. That means reflective gear, high, high visibility colors, and kind of front and back, making sure that it's not just a reflective piece on your chest, but also knowing that you're going to be maybe crossing the street and people will see your side or, you know, some coming up behind you. So you want to make sure that you are visible from all angles. I really like those light up um, options too. Like the slap, we have a few slap bands here that we'll hand out to runners that are glowy and they can Mm -hmm. go solid or flash as well as, I don't think they're vests, but it's kind of like that rope that goes around um, that can change color. And that one is like your whole torso, which I love it when our nighttime runners wear those. And we just need one per group to make it effective. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen them for the shoes, uh, headlamps or, or rear part of your hat. Um, Any sort of lights or additional accessories you can put on, uh, more is better. And just think about, you know, it's it's for safety. All right. Third tip. 
be aware. Um, I coached a police officer for a really long time, and I remember asking him, like, number one thing, um, you know, he dealt a lot with, you know, like crime on foot and, you know, things that we would in our kind of get into as runners or walkers or cyclists. And I always said, what do we do? Like, how do we keep people safe? And his number one answer was always this, and it was just to be aware. Be aware of your surroundings. Not that you have to be on high alert all the time, but just know that if you're distracted, you're a target, right? Um, which I actually take into account when walking the dogs, right? We mm-hmm. used to walk Brucey, who was blind and deaf, and so it was like we always had the no phone out rule. You can't be on a call. You have to be fully present when you walk them, and now we've got three, a whole circus that I'm managing. Um, so bottom line, be aware, right? Same rule applies when we are running. So if you really want to listen to something, just please only use one earbud so that you can still hear out of the other side. And um, keep your screen locked. Like don't have it open and scrolling through. Set, if you're gonna be listening to something, set that playlist so it's already done and you're not having to fiddle with it or having to try to make phone calls. Not the time to do those things ever um, when you're trying to navigate the dark and, and again, like turning your awareness up. And then also just avoiding things like what I'm, this whole outfit that I'm wearing <laughs> is exactly what you don't want to wear. It's all dark with a low brim tap. But um, I will find myself actually doing this where, if, especially if it's precipitating, I'll put on a hat and like kind of hunker down, but it really does mess with my peripheral vision. Mm-hmm. So if you have something on your head, keeping it you know, higher up, not having it super low and covering your eyes. Yeah, and th- those are great tips for, you know, being aware is important for, like you said, uh, knowing your surroundings in case, you know, someone with bad intentions was coming up to you that makes you an easy target, right? Somebody to take your phone or to, to do whatever. But I think also uh, th- you have to think about cyclists yeah. and think about other pedestrians, think about cars. So being aware of those surroundings, especially, the, you know, the, the earphone tip is great for, say, running on the 606 where there are cyclists yeah. who are going to be passing and again, if it's dark, people aren't seeing very well, you have to pay attention to all of that. Tip number four is to share your plan. So there are lots of options for this, but you know, you could tell just someone, your, your roommate, your partner, a friend, like, hey, I'm going running on the 606 or the lakefront path and kind of when to expect you back. And this is especially important for trail running to make sure that people know if, if you're going somewhere that's off of your normal path, but then there are also technology ways that you can do this as well. So either doing a, a share your location on your phone, if you're going to have your phone with you, or some of our smartwatch devices have an ability to add a contact and alert them to your location as well. Some of them take it one step further. I know that Garmin has a feature that if you jar, you know, if you would fall mm-hmm. and, and hit, you know, with a certain force, then mm-hmm. it'll actually call out to your emergency contact too. Oh, so. wow. Yeah. That is really great for trail running if you're sol- if you're solo. Mm-hmm. All right, next up is to use the paths. We are very lucky here in Chicago that we have really great dedicated paths for running and cycling. We want you to focus on those areas and use it whenever possible. And this is one of the things that we actually do with the wind runners, especially during COVID when we couldn't really run inside the track. At some point, is completely unusable. So we would go out to the lakefront path and create these like less than one mile loops Mm. using the paths that would be plowed and safe and lit that's what they're there for so the focus of those paths is to keep you traveling at a similar speed as those around you so you know whether that's running or cycling um great and because of that you're a lot more likely to stay safe both from people coming outside messing with you but also because everyone around you is doing the same thing so if there are call outs you're a lot more likely to do them, you know, to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, And an upside is that because you're finding your flow with these people doing the same thing, you might actually have a better quality workout. So don't assume that your workout in the dark is going to be any harder or less effective because you're doing it with people doing similar things. You can really nail it. Yeah, and the paths are great because they are better maintained than some of our totally. off-road places. And one factor that you have to think about in the dark is where your feet are going. So this goes back to being aware, but that that footing, you know, if there was a pothole, it's gonna be harder to see if you're running on a darker street. Okay, tip number six is to look both ways before you cross the street. Uh, pretty simple, but effective tool to stay safe when running in the dark. Uh, the majority of accidents happen at crosswalks for our pedestrians and and then you have distracted drivers people on their phone 
low visibility depending on the clothing that's being worn, and that is just a recipe for disaster. So look both ways, use the crosswalks if you are crossing a street. Don't rush to cross against a light um, because there are people, I've, I can't even tell you the number of drivers I've seen that have had yeah. ha- either their lights off. off. Like How totally does that off, happen? And, and or no tail lights or no headlights. Right. And so, you know, I'll be honking at somebody or flashing my lights, and it turns out that they have one set of lights and not the other. And that is extremely dangerous for us when we are out on our feet. Um, cars are much bigger than us. So <laughs> to give them the right of way. Don't try to rush across the street to make a light if you're not going to make it. You know, it's better to just stand and wait than to risk your own safety. And then along with that, don't cross between cars. And I think this is a big one. Use those crosswalks, the designated crossing areas, because again, cars cannot see you and you have to move like you are not being seen. So it's your responsibility to make yourself visible. And that means using those crosswalks and which are better lit than popping out from between cars. I will also default to Bruce on this one. We would always joke, what would Bruce do? Um, So if you (laughs) are looking to cross the street, if you could not safely get a blind and deaf pug across that street, the answer is you probably shouldn't be crossing it just yet. So use that that when deciding, should I cross? What would Bruce do? All right, next up is to mix up your routine. So neighborhoods are good options, um, and you can always go through neighborhoods, and if something would happen, let's say you know, something shady is happening, or let's say you hurt yourself, there are going to be a lot of houses where you can ring a doorbell or knock, again, assuming that you would be alone or not with enough people where you could use them for help, but it's a nice kind of dense area where you're not so remote. Um, When running in the dark, also just mix up your timing. And so that's not as predictable. Not that people are casing your house, but you might as well mix it up um, safely so that it's not always the exact same route at the exact same time. It's going to improve both your safety as well as your fitness because you're going to be varying up your terrain and varying up what you encounter. Our next tip is to run against traffic. So if you are out on runs and there are one-way streets or if you're running on a two-way street, it's advisable to run against the traffic that's going uh, and on the sidewalk or on the path. But this is, a, this is more of a safety concern that I've found for our women runners. And I've, I've been running with uh, many women in early mornings or late nights when it's dark and have had people follow, uh, follow the group or follow a single person and harass them. And so one way to get around that is if you are not running in the direction that a car could track you and yell at you, uh, you'd be better off. Yeah, I like it. It's usually better lit, like you were saying, too, because yeah. you tend to, you know, the headlights are lighting things up, so you tend yeah. to see things before you get to them, which is really nice. Yeah. All right, next up, keep your phone handy and your ID on you. So, um, you know, you can use your phone like you were saying, to help track. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, if you have some type of emergency situation, you have a phone to be able to call. So have it on you. You don't always have to have it, you know, usable. Like we said, lock your screen. But it is there if you need it. And then your ID. So whether it's a wearable, like a road ID, um, or it's an ID that you have with your phone or on the back part of your phone, if something would happen, there's a way to say who you are and who to call. Yeah, so there are the road IDs or having a piece of paper in your, oh, in your wallet easy. or just you know, with your ID. Um, these are really important also if you have allergies to medication. Make sure that that information is accessible because you can't always rely on them being able to reach your emergency contact. Yeah, I love that. Piece of paper is super easy too because I always hesitate bringing my ID because mm. I'm like, what if I lose it? What if it pops out with my phone? Right, But a piece of paper would actually not be as tragic if it yeah. got lost. Yeah, my, my uh, tip, well, if I'm losing that piece of paper, I'm probably losing my ID and credit card too, so I hope that that doesn't happen. Um, one thing is a rubber band around all three, and I do that in my pocket. The rubber band actually keeps the, the IDs from oh, yeah. Ooh, jostling wow. around. But also, I am a Ziploc runner, so just like a plastic baggie to keep my phone yeah. dry when it's snowing or raining outside, and throwing the IDs and paper in with that. I like it. All right, our final tip is to listen to your gut. Always trust your instincts. This is about what route to take, whether or not a person or a group of people feel safe, if you feel like you should turn back home. Check in with yourself. If you feel like something is not right, then trust yourself on that. 
And you can always modify your route. You can always head back home or go to a safer space. Um, it's really important that you check in with yourself and if something kind of raises a flag for you, follow that. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Maybe you detour your route and nothing would have happened anyway, but you might be actually avoiding something terrible. All right, to recap, one is gonna be safety in numbers. It's gonna build in accountability and also build in safety. Number two, be visible. It is very dark outside. Wear those high visibility colors and reflective items. Number three, be aware. Keep the earbuds out, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, know your surroundings. Number four, share your plan. Let other people know where you're going or set up those smart features. Number five, use the paths. They are designed to keep people that are running and biking doing similar things, which keeps everybody safe and you might get a better workout in. Number six, look both ways before you cross the street. Number seven, run against traffic. It's gonna keep you safe against oncoming cars as well as get you some better light. Number eight, mix up your routine. So go to other, other places and spaces and run at different times. Number nine, keep your phone and ID handy on you for any emergency situations. And number 10, listen to your gut. That is the number one way to stay safe and aware when running in the dark. All right, we wanna see pictures of your reflective gear. That's your homework. All right, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and when you take it with a flash, it'll just yeah. be all bright. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Thanks guys, see you out there. Thanks for listening to Coach Quip, original music performed by Mend. Follow us online on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Edge Athlete Lounge. Our podcast lives in the blog section of our website. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast, and you can check out the show notes for additional ways to contact us. Ready, set, onward we go.